Hey everybody, welcome back to the practice, that time in the middle of the week where we get together with our small groups to talk about what we're learning on Sundays and take it deeper yep. so that we can put it into practice. practice. Okay. And so a couple of days ago, uh, probably you were at the building listening to a sermon by Steve mm -hmm. about Zacchaeus, I yep. believe that's what happened. But what we were doing a couple days ago is we were listening to a sermon in Spanish. Probably. No, I'm preaching. Oh, you're preaching. <laughs> okay. Well, we are actually right now in Panama. That's yep. the point I'm trying to make. We're really in Panama, though it looks like we're in our living room. We're making <laughs> this before we leave. Okay. Yeah. Just to keep it simple. So I hope that everything went really well on Sunday. And I apologize ahead of time. If we start talking about things that you already talked about on Sunday and it mm -hmm. becomes a little redundant, uh, sorry. But we did want to make this video just so that we could stay in touch while we were gone. Right. Um, so I want to remind you that this coming Sunday, you will be meeting with your small groups in our SALT Sunday services. Yep. And then the next big thing that we have on our calendar is our Good Friday service. Yes. So I know everybody is out and about inviting people to that um, service so we can see how, just how many guests we could have with us. That yeah. would be so awesome. Yeah. It's going to be a great day. Yeah. Cool. Um, so uh, Zacchaeus, Luke chapter 19. Uh, if you want to turn your Bibles over to there and we can, you know, we can start to look at that. There's several things that I wanted to talk about today. I've actually um, uh, been studying this passage quite a bit uh, over the last couple of months um, because in, in one of my classes I'm taking for my master's program, I kind of did a deep dive um, into into this story and kind of how it all fits into things. So there's so many things that I wanted to talk about and I was so disappointed that the schedule didn't work out that I was going to get to <laughs> get to preach about. But so there's just a couple of things that, that, that I wanted to talk uh, touch on today. Now the the general thing as you go through the story of Zacchaeus is this that we see this man who's desperate to get to Jesus. He's got obstacles in his way and he's going to do whatever it takes to move past those obstacles so that he can actually get close to Jesus. Uh, so I just want to read the story and then uh, share a couple other thoughts as we go into it. In uh, Luke chapter 19, verse 1, it says, Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. He wanted to see who Jesus was, but because he was short, he could not see over the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree to see him since Jesus was coming that way. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. And all the people saw this and began to mutter, he is gone to be the guest of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor. And if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. And Jesus said to him, today, Salvation has come to this house because this man too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. So what just a really interesting story of this chief tax collector, someone who was totally hated within society, uh, but obviously would have been well known in Jericho. Um, and here he is, and he's, he's trying to figure out how does he get to Jesus. Now, why does he want to see Jesus? We don't know. We don't have that, that background. Uh, we can speculate. There's different reasons on why he would have come to, come, wanted to get to close to Jesus. Maybe it was just the celebrity of it, this big, you know, famous rabbi that's been healing all these people, and yeah. thousands of people are following him all the way through Galilee on the way to Jerusalem. It could have just been that, like, wait, who's, who's here? I, I want to see. Um, but, but we see in Zacchaeus this willingness to overcome obstacles so that he could get next to Jesus. And then we see Jesus responding to that, that, that when Zacchaeus takes this step of faith, that, uh, then Jesus sees that and responds to it and says, hey, can I come hang out at your house today? Mm -hmm. And through that interaction, there is something that happens, whether it's just being in Jesus' presence or whether it is being around him or something that Jesus says that brings about this repentance in Zacchaeus where he's like, okay, something has been bothering me. This has not been working well. The way I've been living my life has not been working and I am now going to change. And we see this incredible change in him. And so now these are just the, the, the basic you know, kind of things that we see as we go through the story. And I'm sure that, that Steve talked about much of that on Sunday. I actually haven't had it. He's been out of town 
at the time of us recording this, so I haven't had a chance to talk to him about what he's going to preach about on this story. But those are some of the, the, the general things that, 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 that we tend to get out of this story, which I think are all really good. And then it ends with this kind of like the purpose statement for Jesus saying, the Son of Man came to seek and to save what was lost. And, and throughout the whole Gospel of Luke, it kind of comes down to this. It boils down to this. Jesus is like, this is why I'm here. I'm here to seek and save the lost. And he just gave us an example of that, of seeking and saving the lost. So now, um, I wanted to kind of give you a, a couple other thoughts that have, that have kind of come up to my mind that I thought were really cool as I've been studying through Luke. And then I want to leave you with um, a parable to read and a question to consider. So um, if we can go back, uh, if you want to look back in Luke chapter 5, if, if you've got your Bibles out, and I wanted to kind of show you this interesting thing that happens in Luke chapter 5. At the beginning of Luke 5, Jesus calls his first disciples, and then there's two miracles that happen. He heals a man with leprosy, and then he heals the paralyzed man whose friends kind of like dropped him through the roof. Oh, yeah. So there's these two powerful miracles. Um, and kind of as, as Jesus is starting his ministry in Galilee, he calls his first disciples and then boom, he goes right in and he does these two miracles that's kind of si signaling, hey, now there's some power coming from God here and I want you to see this. And then right after that, he calls Levi, who was a tax collector, and says, I want to go eat at your house. So he goes and has a big party at Levi's house and people are like, why is he eating with tax collector and sinners? And then right after that, then Jesus tells the parable of the new wine and the new wineskins. Oh, yeah. um, and because he's kind of, it's almost like he's alerting them to this idea like, okay, there's, there, there's a power coming um, through the miracles. And then he shows them this is what the new kingdom is going to look like by calling this tax collector in. Tax collectors were the hated ones in society. They were on the outside. They were not considered um, well respected. But Jesus is like, my kingdom is going to be one where people like this are welcomed. Mm -hmm. My kingdom is going to be one where we welcome everybody. And all through Luke and then into the book of Acts that Luke writes, we get to see this progression where Jesus is opening up the kingdom to those on the outside, uh, to the sick, to the tax collectors and sinners, to women. Luke writes so much about women that is mm -hmm. so positive. Um, and so he's, he's finding those on the outskirts of society and saying, this is who my kingdom is for. It's not just for those who thought that they were on the inside. It's for everybody. And so at the beginning here in Luke chapter 5, he's, he's like stamping it, saying, this is what, what my kingdom is going to look like. He brings in Levi, and then he says, and it's going to be new wine and a new wineskins. So then he starts his ministry and goes through that. And then you get to see all these things. And remember, we've talked about in Luke 9, how uh, after uh, he went up on the Mount of Transfiguration and talked to Moses and Elijah, he resolutely set himself towards Jerusalem. And then he started moving towards Jerusalem after that. And thousands of people started following him. In Luke chapter 15, it says that tax collectors and sinners were gathering around him and hanging out with him. And the people began to mutter and complain. And he tells these three powerful uh, stories about the lost sheep, the lost coin and the lost son. And so Jesus is going out now, like he's saying, like tax collectors and sinners are coming in. And Jesus is like, yeah, because this is what my kingdom is about, is going to find those who are lost and bringing them in. And then in Luke chapter 18, Jesus tells this parable about, uh, you know, it says to those who were confident of their own righteousness and looked down on everybody else. Jesus tells this parable about uh, the, 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 the rich or the, the Pharisee who was like, God, you know, thank you that I'm not like this tax collector. But then the tax collector was the hero of the story because he was able to be humble before God and say, yes, I, I'm, I'm a sinner. And so Jesus then is, there's this theme going through Luke of the tax collectors representing those on the outside who never thought that they could be on the inside. Now they were going to be welcomed into the kingdom. And then that brings us to the end of Jesus' ministry as he's going through Galilee, moving towards Jerusalem. And as we come up to chapter 18, or, or chapter 19, where the story of Zacchaeus is, the last story in chapter 18 is where uh, Jesus heals a blind man as he's coming into Jericho. Right as he's about to walk into Jericho, he heals a blind man. So it's like signaling, hey, I need you to go from where you can't see to now you can see. So it's like, hey, pay attention, something's about to happen. And so Jericho was like right at the base of the mountain um, as you're getting ready to come up into Jerusalem. So it's like as Jesus on his very last trip is heading up the mountain in Jerusalem, he comes into Jericho, he heals this blind man, and then he walks through the town and is like as kind of as a last act 
in a sense, of his ministry. He says, Zacchaeus, come down, and I want to come to your house today. So he brings Zacchaeus down. Zacchaeus has this huge change of heart, and he's like, yes, I, I, I want to do this. And then it says in chapter 19, right after that, while they were still listening to this, right after he says the Son of Man came to seek and save what was lost, the very next verse while they were still listening to this, he went on to tell them a parable because he was near Jerusalem and the people thought that the kingdom of God was going to appear at once. So again, we have this um, progression, this pattern of a miracle, a calling of a tax collector, and then a parable. So in chapter five, it was the beginning of his ministry. Chapter 19, it's the end of his ministry, but that same pattern. And so then this parable is the parable of the Minas where um, you, you, uh, there's, he's going through and talking about how God, or, or this, this king had gone off to be, or this man had gone off to be crowned king, and he left his uh, subjects with something, and they were to invest that and bring good out of it. And so this is really interesting, because the first parable was about, this is what my kingdom is going to be like, welcoming everybody in. The second parable is like, so now I want you to continue doing the work. And now, while I'm gone, while you're waiting for my return, this is how I want you to live. And he had just given them the example of bringing in the tax collector and opening the kingdom up to people like that. And then he tells them this parable to say, this is what I want you to continue doing until I come back. And then after that, he goes up to Jerusalem and the rest of the teaching that happens in the Gospel of Luke is all basically dealing with that last week of his life and interactions with the religious leaders and his last words to his disciples in the Last Supper. So it's like the kind of the bookend of his ministry as he's coming to an end here. So here's what I would love for you to discuss and talk about in your groups this week. I want you to go ahead and read together this parable in Luke chapter 19, the parable of the 10 minas from verse 11 all the way down to verse 27. It's a really interesting parable. There's a lot of things in it, but I want you to see what can you get out of this parable? What can you draw from that? Um, and then I want you to talk about how does that parable instruct us about how to continue Jesus' mission of seeking and saving the lost? What do we learn from this parable about what Jesus has been trying to communicate about opening up the kingdom to all of those uh, on the outskirts of society and those who feel like that they're on the outside or that they're not valued? What does this parable tell us about the way that we should be engaging and living our life now? Mm. So that's the stuff that I wanted us to talk about in Zacchaeus. <laughs> Wasn't that great? <laughs> 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 I will say, I'm going to add one little teeny tiny thing. Okay. I've been re-watching The Chosen. Yeah. I know many of you are watching The Chosen. But I've just been um, struck by how hard it was for the disciples to accept Matthew. Hmm. And I think, you know, there's a part of me that has this like, yeah, the tax collector's got to come in. Jesus is so awesome. There's another part of me that goes, I wonder if I would have been like that. Mm. Because I, I'm not sure who's comparable right. in our society to a tax collector. But I know that the rest of the disciples did feel completely betrayed right. by these guys. They right. were Jews, yet they didn't want to suffer like the Jews. Right. And that would be really hard, yeah. you know, to accept. So I don't know, it's really challenged my view to think, I wonder if I had would have had a really hard time accepting this um, person who really betrayed us. Right. I mean, right. That, that's how it would feel. Absolutely. That you feel betrayed by this guy. Like he wasn't willing to embrace the hard parts of being a Jew and, and had been really... Um, you know, oppressing them in right. a way, you totally. know, just going in, you know, going in cahoots, being in cahoots with the Roman government and holding over the Jews this really high tax. So really exploiting them. Right. I don't know. That is a big, that's a shift for me. And it also helps me to think about what Jesus did with those first 12 guys having such different people in there, yeah. a zealot a tax collector than these guys that were in the Galilee, you know, the Galileans who are really influenced by the Pharisees. And so it's just like the church today, mm -hmm. correct? I mean, mm -hmm. Jesus calls all these different people together, but then somehow when we're together, we want us to be more alike. Right. 
than we really are. Yep. It's such a high call. So anyways. absolutely, that's good. That's something else to think about. <laughs> Love it. I didn't mean to distract from the real lesson. <laughs> no, that's that's. <laughs> Because, I mean, it, it's one thing to talk about that, like, okay, yes, the kingdom is for everybody. It's for those on the outside. Yeah. Like, yay! Except when it comes down to, oh, actually welcoming somebody into small into my small group that I can't stand. Welcoming yeah. somebody into my small group who has cheated me out of money before. Uh, sitting beside somebody at church who's totally offended me and lied about me behind my back. Yeah. Woo! That's, that's when it, I you know, call. it's like, okay, so this whole thing about forgiveness you remember last week we talked about that thing where jesus is like hey if they come back seven times in a day and say i repent you must forgive them <laughs> you know so how do how do you do that so yes yeah, so i i i was all excited i mean I, I get excited about when i see this stuff throughout you know throughout the scriptures that that, that that show us ways that luke was writing it and lessons we can learn from it and then there's just this other part of just like man it's hard to want to get, get along and forgive people and want to do this <laughs> But that's what following Jesus is, yeah. honestly. And everybody's welcome. Everybody's welcome. And all of us are going to have to grow to forgive like Jesus did. When he was on the cross, when they hurled their insults, he did not retaliate. Instead, he entrusted himself to him who judges justly. And this is who we follow. This is who we've said Jesus is Lord. That's who we're going to try to be like. Amen. So let some of that stir some of your discussion in your group, and I hope that it goes really well. Hope you have great, wonderful small group services this coming Sunday, and uh, we look forward to catching up yeah. to you in the month of April. Please pray for us. We're still on our journey. That's true. That'd pray for our safety. Love you guys. See you later.